Okay, so we've got this thing uh, pretty much sanded to 320, um, almost the entire thing. The uh, reason why I say almost is because the top here, we've left it sanded to 120. And there's a reason why we're going to do that. Uh, the way we're going to finish this is we're going to, uh, we're going to pop the grain, so to speak, um, on this quilted maple. And what that means is, um, maybe I should explain first uh, how quilted maple actually gets its figure to it. Um, usually you'll have a piece of wood and the grain will travel straight through it and you'll end up with your top grain and your side grain and whatnot. Um, but with quilted maple, instead of the, rain, instead of the uh, grain running straight through the piece, it kind of runs on a wave, uh, kind of ripply kind of uh, um, profile I guess you could say. And uh, so what happens is when you cut um, into the face of the wood, um, what's happening is you're cutting off the tops of these waves and it's creating end grain um, on the actual that's mixed with the top or with the side grain here or the top grains excuse me so it's these parts with the end grain that um, kind of give it um, you know when you when you put a finish on it uh, kind of the deeper parts or whatever um, is the end grain uh, taking on more of the finish than the uh, than the top grain is so, uh, you know, we've all been uh, in areas where, you know, trying to stain a piece of uh, any kind of wood or whatever and you get to the end grain and it always takes on stain much more readily because of the open pore structure of it. Well, we're going to take that, uh, we're going to take advantage of that in this situation. And what we're going to do um, is we're going to go with a dark stain over top of this and then we're going to sand it back. Whenever we sand it back, um, the stain will will sand out of the top grain uh, much easier than it will sand out of this uh, end grain that's sticking up here. So what we'll be left with is just the dark stain in, in the end grain parts and, and uh, what you do is you do a couple coats of that and get that nice and dark and then you go over the entire thing with your color and get your color right and uh, it, in, it, uh, it enhances the grain uh, or pops it so to speak uh, as some people call it. Uh, gives it a really nice effect, a really um, gives it a really deep contrast between um, black and whatever your color is going to be in this circumstance is going to be red so it'll be a nice red and black kind of um, you know kind of a wavy type of surface <clears throat> so what I've done is um, I've put I've, I've coated some of these areas with epoxy these areas where I absolutely do, do not want to get any of this stain here because um, this is going to be uh, finished clear same as the back we might do like a red toner coat but as it stands right now we want to seal it out uh, just in the completely natural finish so I've done that here and I've also done it on the bindings on the headstock um, because whenever we go to do the headstock we're doing a matching headstock for the body here so we'll be doing the same uh, standing process and we don't want to get any of that on the bindings that are already installed so what I did is I actually did epoxy on the bindings and then I've also um, if you can see here I've also masked them off um, just as a double precaution to make sure we, do, we don't want to get any stain on these uh, bindings at all. So I've kind of double sealed them out uh, so that doesn't happen. Okay, so our first step here, what I've done is I've uh, mixed up some of this uh, liquid stain here. And it's just a water-based liquid stain, uh, the color tone stuff. And this stuff uh, works very well. I uh, use it very sparingly. Um, I've got, I believe it's... I don't know, maybe a one ounce container here. And uh, I just, you know, filled that one ounce container up with water and added about six drops of that stuff and it is like jet black. So that's exactly what we want. We, that's what we're going for. Uh, the darker the better for this. We got our glove here. And all we're gonna do is, you can, you'll notice here that I've got the neck all uh, protected anywhere. Anywhere that you don't want any of the stain to be, make sure that you mask it off and be careful around those areas. So we're just gonna use a rag here. We're gonna dip it in here. And we're just gonna start in an area. We don't wanna start around the edges. We wanna start in a wide open area here. Kinda just work this around. Looks like I might have to, uh, looks like I might have to go for a little more uh, stain in this. That doesn't quite look as dark as I want it. So, it's the beauty thing of this stuff is that uh, you can just keep adding more if it's not dark enough. Okay, so we just want to work this around. Stick into the areas along the inside. It's getting pretty windy up there. 
and this is a really nice dark stain. So when we sand this back, we may only have to do one application of this. Sometimes I won't do it as strong as this, and I'll do, you know, uh, a few applications. Okay, now we want to start working it out to the edges, and we want to be careful around this area because we're doing a faux binding here, and we don't want anything to be dripping off the edges here. Now I have run some masking tape around the inside of here because we'll be going at that with a brush and I just don't want the brush to fall off of these uh, ledges here on the body as they come right into the right into the neck. Uh, they get pretty pretty narrow and if uh, the brush slips I don't, you know, I'd rather it uh, be protected. Okay, so this is looking pretty good so far. I'm just really looking to get this end grain to take on as much stain as it possibly can. Once again, we're near the edges, so just be careful that you don't slip off. Be mindful of how much you're putting on around the edges too, because you don't want it to build up and then, um, you know, kind of run off later on. Just try and get it as even as possible on here. Now it is maple and it is quilted so it's only going to get so even. I mean end grain is very unpredictable and when you have so much of it on the face here it's really uh, hard to predict how much each part is going to take on. But you know like I said as um, get it as even as possible. And when we go back and sand it off we'll just uh, kind of sand it accordingly if we need to take some more off or if we need to make a part more, a little more dominant, then we can always do that uh, with sanding. I'm going to go get my brush. Okay, we got our brush here. And using the same principle, we're just going to start kind of outside the line and work our way in. Just so that we're nice and careful around these edges here. That looks pretty good. This doesn't have to be a great brush, as you can see. I have bristles falling out all over the place with this one, but... Uh, doesn't matter because they stay on the surface and then after this is dry we'll just wipe those away. See we got this nice dark effect going here now. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, looking pretty good here. I'm going to push it in there. And the more you work away at this, the more down in the pores it'll get, and the more effective this uh, technique will be. It's looking pretty good. Okay, we're going to let that dry. We're going to do the headstock, and we'll let them both dry, and then uh, we'll sand it back and have a look and see what it looks like. Okay, so our stain's dry on here. Um, Easy way to tell if a uh, water-based stain is dry is if it doesn't feel cool to the touch. Uh, pretty much means that it's uh, dry and ready to work with. So all we're going to do now is uh, all the stain that we've put on the body, we're actually going to start to take off now. And we're just using um, 220 sandpaper in a uh, sanding block. And we're just going to work back and forth here. And what we're trying to do we're trying to sand most of this off, um, but we want to make sure that we leave uh, some of the stain in the uh, in the end grain that I was talking about here, and that will give us kind of that ripple effect. Um, it'll take probably a little bit to get down to where you want it to, uh, especially doing it manually like this. Some guys will use a random orbital sander for this. I like to have a little more control while I'm doing it. So I like to be able to, uh, if I come to an area that I see that uh, needs a little bit more attention than uh, you know some of the other areas, then I can concentrate on that area and just take off a little bit of it at a time until I get it to um, until I get it to look in the way that I want it to look. And uh, you know, doing it manually gives you that option. Uh, doing it with a random orbital sander, you kind of got to get in there and get out, and then uh, and you got to switch to a sanding block anyways to do around the uh, to do around the neck. So I just like to do it with a sanding block anyways. So we'll just keep plugging away at this. And uh, you know, you're gonna end up with a bunch of uh, 
flax dust around your shop and all over your hands and whatnot. So, you know, make sure you got a make sure you got a vacuum handy to clean up around, and clean up after yourself as you're doing this. And uh, that way you'll be able to get a lot of the um, dust off of the surface as well, and kind of you can kind of track your progress that way too. Work away at it. You can see it's starting to come off now. We're starting to see the light parts and the distinction between the light parts and the dark parts here. And we'll try and just get one area here to what we kind of generally want, and then uh, I'll be able to give give you an idea of uh, what we're looking for, basically. Um, in terms of uh, saturation for the dark here. Just keep sanding away at this. And you see, see this is a good thing about doing it with a sanding block is that I know that I've already kind of come down to where I want to be right around here. So I can, you know, I can stay away from that area and just kind of work my other areas around to, to uh, you know, to kind of match up with, um, with uh, the depth of the of the uh, dark wood we have here. So a little bit dusty here. Let's expect it because we are sanding after all. And what we're looking for is just uh, you know kind of a 50-50 contrast of light wood and dark wood here. It doesn't have to be exactly 50-50, but just as long as it looks balanced, you know what I mean? Like, you'll be able to tell, you'll know what I'm talking about as you get going. You'll see areas, and um, let me just grab the, uh, the vacuum, we'll clean this off, and I can, I can kind of show you some of these areas that I'm talking about. Okay, so I've kind of zoomed up in here so you can uh, get a better idea of what I'm doing here. Now I'm getting close to where I want to be. So you can see in this area here, it's pretty dark in some of these areas and uh, pretty light in others. So what we'll do is uh, we'll just kind of concentrate our efforts around here, kind of get some of the light showing around here a little bit more. And we're looking like we're getting pretty close here too as well. So we'll just take a little bit more off here and uh, that should give us the same consistency of this area in here. So we'll just You know, it's a fine line to, uh, you know, having too much dark on here and not having enough. So you really got to kind of, you know, do a few strokes, kind of uh, clean it up a little bit and uh, have a look and see where you're, where you're at with pro uh, progress wise. Another thing you can do is you can take a little bit of naphtha and you can wipe this down. Um, I would recommend getting most of the, uh, most of the stain off of there first before you start doing things like that because it can... Uh, reactivate this stain and kind of pull it into the lighter areas so you want to be careful of that you want to make sure you get the majority of the stain off before you go doing that that's just kind of to give you a quick wipe uh, and make it a you know a, a, a kind of a don't don't make don't saturate the cloth with naphtha just uh, enough to moisten it and then uh, just give it a quick wipe so that it evaporates fast and uh, doesn't you know smear any of this smear any of the stain where you don't want it okay so we, we pretty much got this area looking pretty good and we're just going to concentrate over here now Just doing a few strokes at a time. And what we're looking for is these areas that are starting to come light, we want them to get as light as possible. And we're looking pretty consistent there now. You can see it's starting to take on a kind of a marbly effect. Okay, now we'll, uh, we'll switch and we'll uh, move down to this um, lower horn here. You'll see here, we're starting to get to where we want to be as well. And we are going to do a few coats of this. Uh, so, you know, after we get this all sanded down and everything, we're going to coat it again with the black. Um, usually I do two or three coats. 
um, just because I want to make sure that this end grain is taking on as much black as possible. That's if I want a really um, a really stark contrast to this uh, with a, a red flowing right into a black type of deal. Um, like I said, if you want a bit of a lower contrast, and you can just you can instead of using a black, you can mix like a gray or um, a darker version of whatever color you're going to be doing for your final color. Um, See, so there's different things you can do to get different effects, but this one just gives it the most, um, I think the most depth, really. It, it really looks deep, um, just because of the, the black looks like it's, you know, the, the grain sinks right back into it, so it looks really nice. Okay, so we're going to continue on. We're going to get the rest of it looking similar to this, and then we're going to be able to wipe down with naphtha, and that will give us a, uh, a little bit of a better idea of what it's going to look like, um, you know, underneath a clear coat. And... Uh, it will actually darken all this stuff up and let us know exactly how dark these areas are. And uh, when we get done that, we'll do the same to the headstock and then we'll come back and have a look at it. Okay, so we got this sanded back and we're just going to give it a quick wipe down with some uh, naphtha here. And, uh, see what we got. See how dark this really is. That's... You know, it's black, but it's, it could probably get a lot darker than that. Seeing some of these areas here. There's a little bit more that we could possibly, uh, you know, these could probably take on a lot more steam, so. <clears throat> this is just going to give us a basic idea, though, of where we're at. So you can see, we've got a basic idea of um, of what we're looking for here. See these areas all in here. Um, you know, when we hit this with a red stain or whatever, and uh, everything stains up red, they will, uh, there should be a pretty good contrast there. Easiest way to see how much contrast you're going to have is uh, just to see how dark the, the black is when it's wet. So let's give this a wipe. I want to see in this area here. Yeah. And you see, there's some areas in here that we got to go back with a second coat and get, um, which isn't a big deal. We usually do two or three coats anyways. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We'll uh, wipe, wipe down the rest of the uh, top and the rest of the uh, headstock here. I've done the same to the headstock, by the way. And then we will... Uh, let that set up and sand that back again. And then uh, what we'll do is when we sand back the second time, we're really going to concentrate on keeping everything uh, even and everything because we want to shoot for this to be our last coat of black on here. Um, and then we'll, uh, once we get that sanded back, we'll be able to put some color on here. Should look pretty nice. Till then.